and I'm Lisa Broom with the CBC News Break. The decomposed body of a woman was discovered inside her home at Inch Cape St. Philip yesterday morning. She's been identified as 52-year-old Shirley Barrow. She was discovered by a neighbor around 11 in the morning who then alerted police. Lawmen say she lived alone. They're treating the death as unnatural. Investigations are continuing into the matter. A memorandum of understanding is to be signed between the Barbados Investment and Development Corporation and St. Lucia's Trade and Export Agency. The BIDC is part of a 24-member trade delegation led by Minister of Industry, International Business, Commerce and Small Business Development, Donville Innes, currently in Castries. The two countries are close trading partners with Barbados importing beer and bananas from St. Lucia. CEO of St. Lucia's Trade and Export Agency, Jacqueline Emmanuel Flood, says the trade mission from Barbados is a mutual response to a similar visit by a St. Lucian delegation in November last year. She expects positive results this year. <coughs> Chief Executive Officer of the Pinelands Creative Workshop, Rodney Grant, says the Pinelands and Wildy communities have undergone several changes, transforming into areas of commerce. He says there's now a level of comfort and confidence in the community by businesses which have set up there. We now have a flourishing community where we have so much government entities can feel safe to come and build the, the offices. We have private sector companies who are building every day within the, 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 the outskirts and the, within the inner, um, inner, inner city of, of the finance community. And we have individuals, as I said, if you walk through every single day, some new person is opening a, a business in the finance community. And to me, this speaks well for what we have done over the years. Barbados's Minister of Energy says the country is not interested in competing with the energy sectors in other Caribbean countries. Senator Darcy Boyce made this position known during a special plenary on Caribbean regional energy integration at the recently concluded TMT Energy Conference in Trinidad and Tobago. Senator Boyce says Barbados's energy sector is much smaller and more diversified than Trinidad, and he adds that Barbados does not expect to see a large development of the oil and gas industry. He says in the long term, the market will determine whether there is any chance in the, any change that is, in the size of the island's energy sector. Meantime, Guyana's Minister of Natural Resources, Raphael Trotman, said that country is looking to fill the loopholes TNT left out, but competing with Port of Spain or CARICOM is not on the cards. Normal water service to St. Lucie and parts of St. Michael will be disrupted tomorrow. The Barbados Water Authority says there will be a shutdown of its system in Sela, St. Lucie. This will be between the hours of 9 in the morning and 2 in the afternoon. As a result, residents can expect low water pressure or outages. They are asked to store an adequate amount of water for the, dis for the duration of the shutdown. Well, there will also be a partial road closure and shutdown along Pine Gardens Plantation Road, St. Michael tomorrow. This will be between 9 in the morning and 5 in the evening. The work is part of the mains laying project in Package C. As part of planned activities for Black History Month in February, one local spiritual Baptist church is incorporating Barbados's 50th anniversary of independence celebrations. It's the Mount Fisca Spiritual Baptist Church on Roebuck Street in the city. Pastor Bishop Marlon Jones says the 200th anniversary of the Bussa Rebellion will also be recognized. He says the week of celebrations will start on February 14th at the church. This will take place at the NUPW headquarters on a Wednesday the 17th at 7 p.m. On Thursday, we'll be having a lunchtime lecture, and this will be geared towards the youth of Barbados, towards the schools, and well, it's open for any person, but specifically to the schools, we're gonna have a lunchtime lecture. And uh, the theme for the lecture would be, emancipate yourself from mental slavery, none but ourselves can free our minds. And he's gonna be looking at our educational system to make a determination whether our educational system is doing us justice as a people who have come out of the, the, the scourge of slavery. The week of activities will draw to a close with an African Thanksgiving at the church on February 21st.
the church will be decorated in a, as an African village. So when you come here, you're going to be transformed into an African village. And we're going to be having our table set, spiritual at the style. We'll be having the variety of foods like yams, sweet potatoes, edders. Everything that you can think about will be laid on the table. It's, a, it's going to be a blessed occasion. And we invite the public of Barbados. Um, our Dr. Judy Duncan, she lives between United States and Trinidad. She'll be coming in to conduct the, the Thanksgiving. Over $4 million were donated to needy causes on the island by the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust last year. The figure was provided by Grand Patron of the Trust, Derek Smith, during its annual gold tournament and fundraising dinner at the Sandy Lane Country Club. Over $5 million was raised during the last event. Mr. Smith says 115 organizations or individuals benefited from contributions in 2015 contributions raising from $1,000 for the hire of a bouncy castle at Easter to, to the $1 million we donate to the yearly running of our Sunshine Early Stimulation Centre. A few more examples of what we undertake include a wheelchair clinic which involves adapting the wheelchairs to individually fit the child's body, therefore improving their posture and, and uh, quality of life. There's something we call the Eden Lodge Project. We fund the back-to-school program providing uniforms and school supplies and at Christmas send hampers and gifts to the 70 needy families. Sports for Life program which provides troubled children from age 11 to 15 a chance to turn their lives around. The winners of the annual golf tournament were presented with their prizes. Mr. Smith extended thanks to all who worked behind the scenes and those who donated and supported the trust. He assured them the money will be spent wisely. As Grand Patron, I'm privileged to stand here and relate to you all that we, we as in the trustees, have done. When in fact it's not what we have done, but what all of you have done that I should be saying. Because without your support, generosity over the years, we would have accomplished only a tiny fraction of what we have. So please take away the brochures on your table, read them, watch the soon to be shown video, and give yourselves a huge pat on the back for changing the lives of many, many people over the years. So on behalf of John, Julian, Pippa and myself, thank you for giving us your vote of confidence and allowing us to dis distribute your funds in what we consider the best way. Time for a break now, but when we come back, regional and international news. Stay with us. Coming.